San Junipero is the fourth episode in the third season of the dark sci-fi anthology series Black Mirror, an episode following the story of Kelly and Yorkie, two girls that meet each other and fall in love in a party town called San Junipero in the year 1987. This episode is somewhat different from what we've seen in the series so far. Other than Hang the DJ, no other episode comes off as bright and optimistic as San Junipero. Today we're going to dive into this beautifully nostalgic trip as I analyze the story, point out things you might have missed, and and add some clarity to the ending. We learn that San Junipero is a computer simulation functioning as immersive nostalgic therapy for old dying people. Kelly and Yorkie enter this world and take form of the versions of themselves when they were in their early 20s. In real life, Kelly is 73 years old and Yorkie is said to be around the same age. Yorkie is at first an awkward, introverted 20-something, walking into this world without really knowing how to socialize because she never got the chance to live her actual life past the age of 21 to the point where she has never been on a dance floor. As told to us by Greg later in the episode, her folks were highly uptight about her coming out as a lesbian, as they were extremely religious and not wanting a gay daughter, and the night that she came out, she got in her car and ran it off the road, causing her to become a quadriplegic. At the beginning, Yorkie enters Tucker's, and when Davis, the guy who is always getting shafted, asked Yorkie if she wanted to play the arcade game Top Speed, she looks onto the screen and sees a red car run off the road and crash. With a reminder of the tragic event that paralyzed her in real life, she is taken back by watching the screen. By the way, music plays a huge role in this episode, and gives the audience clues towards the plot twist, and relates perfectly to the characters and setting. The biggest one being Heaven is a Place on Earth by Belinda Carlisle. The song is heard two times, at the beginning and at the end. It's used in the beginning of the episode to better help establish the time period, and used at the end to better get the message across that San Junipero isn't just a computer computer simulation by Tucker's systems, but is literally heaven on earth as Kelly and Yorkie upload their consciousness into it, and theoretically live forever. Kelly even makes a remark on this when talking to Greg at the hospital, saying, uploaded to the cloud, sounds like heaven. The song Girlfriend in a Coma by the Smiths plays in San Junipero very briefly, but hints at the real life state of Yorkie. And going back to the bar Tucker's, Yorkie is a little shaken up after seeing the red car crash in the video game, and tells Davis, I just want to get my bearings a bit, a term meaning to ground yourself, to find out where you are, and to see what you want to do next. Then later at the bar when Kelly and Yorkie are talking about the authenticity of Yorkie's looks while also getting to know each other better, the song Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bangles starts playing. A song that was inspired by music producer Liam Sternberg watching some people on a ferry walking awkwardly to keep their balance and get their footing, symbolizing the start to Yorkie's change. As Kelly helps to show Yorkie the kind of person she really is, Kelly plays a huge role in getting Yorkie to be okay with herself. Yorkie has always been around her highly religious family for most of her active life. Her folks were really uptight about her coming out as a lesbian, as they were extremely religious and not wanting a gay daughter. So the lifestyle of her being gay was unholy and frowned upon in the eyes of her family, thus making her an outcast to the people that she was related to. This resonates deep within her, and we see a fair amount of moments where she is affected by this. When first dancing with Kelly, she looks at everyone else in the club so nervously, as they are just casually glancing back at her. They are no hateful expressions and everyone just seems to be having a good time and not really caring about anything else. Yet in the alleyway, Yorkie mentions that everyone was looking and, you know, two girls dancing, thinking that everyone will give her the same haunting resentment that her family has given her in the past. Later in their conversation, Kelly asks, what would you like to do that you've never done before? And Yorkie replies with so many things. But when Kelly tries making a move, Yorkie comes up with an excuse that she is engaged and keeps saying that she can't. Even though her engagement is just so Greg, the real MVP of the story, can just sign off on the documents and get her uploaded into San Junipero. Because of the influence from Yorkie's family, she was not allowing herself to be happy. She was ashamed of who she was, and too afraid to experience what she's always wanted to do. San Junipero is consistently referred to as a party town, a place of no judgment. The Bar Tuckers, aka the place where Kelly and Yorkie meet and fall for one another, has a color scheme of pink, blue, and purple, which is representative of the bisexual sexual pride flag, showing us that this is an accepting place, a kind of safe haven for Yorkie. In fact, this color scheme continues throughout the entire episode when they're in San Junipero, whether it's the lighting or the clothing they wear. Kelly is there to help Yorkie to explore her sexuality, while also helping Yorkie come to peace with her other fears, like getting in a red car again, and cruise down the road to Kelly's beach house. Kelly almost gets in an accident and drives off the road. Once she slams on the brake, they both take a breath and start laughing, making light of the situation. 
causing a much better reaction compared to when Yorkie was looking at the arcade game. I'm just gonna take a moment to talk about Yorkie's glasses, and not just to talk about how they are stylish as but the meaning behind them. When in Tucker's, during one of her first conversations with Kelly, we find out that Yorkie's lenses are fake and that she wears them for comfort. We later see Yorkie try on all kinds of different outfits for different lifestyles, but then reverts back to her normal outfit with glasses. She wears these glasses continuously till her death and then sets them down in the sand and leaves them there as she finally feels like she can breathe and be comfortable as she is completely okay with who she is now. When Kelly was fighting with Yorkie, she said that she had a husband and a daughter, two people that she loved. Kelly's arc was also centered around doing what would make you happy and doing what you want without basing your decisions off of what anyone else thinks is best for you, including your family. Kelly's husband didn't even try San Junipero. Because he lost his 39 year old daughter, he claimed that he could never do something like that since his daughter missed out on it. But Kelly mentions that she doesn't believe in the afterlife. She believes they're both gone. When she was in love with her husband, Kelly knew she was a bisexual, but never acted on any of it and never did anything with anyone else. Like Yorkie, in San Junipero she was exploring another side of herself. When Kelly's having her confrontation with Yorkie towards the end as they're both arguing in wedding dresses, Yorkie is confused why Kelly isn't wanting to stay, but Kelly rants about her husband and daughter, and I believe Kelly was just projecting her own internal argument onto Yorkie. Kelly loves Yorkie, but also loved her family, and is filled with guilt as she is finding it hard to let go. And she is very much familiar with a place called the Quagmire, a party factory in the middle of the desert where people are into all kinds of weird, violent, and thrilling stuff, as they are just trying to feel something. Earlier in the episode, Kelly tells Yorkie she doesn't do feelings, but by doing so, she is suppressing the one good thing that she found in San Junipero. After they have a big argument, Kelly purposefully crashes her car, mirroring the same kind of crash Yorkie went through. When Kelly is laying on the ground after the accident, it starts raining, just like the first time they were talking in the alleyway outside of Tucker's. The one person who is there to pick her up is Yorkie. Since Kelly Kelly helped Yorkie get her bearings, Yorkie is now able to do the same for Kelly. During the ending montage, Yorkie is finally driving again, as she is getting over the trauma from her accident, and the two are dancing like nobody is watching. Kelly, along with the world of San Junipero, helped Yorkie become fully comfortable with herself and her sexuality. The ending was no doubt bittersweet, as it does raise a lot of questions about the afterlife, discussing other people such as Kelly's husband refusing to try San Junipero. However, Yorkie mentions that you can take yourself out of the system very easily, if you choose to do so. But then again, we see a much more cynical version of simulations in USS Callister, and a way of using these simulations for the most inhumane kind of torture in White Christmas. Judging by the fact that San Junipero is used widely in the medical field and is heavily regulated, it does seem way better than anything we've seen so far. At its core, San Junipero is about Kelly figuring out how to move on, and for Yorkie, it's more about fighting to become herself, and being able to start a romance with someone for the first time, finally allowing herself to be happy. One learns how to love herself, and the other one learns how to love again. Those were my thoughts on Season 3, Episode 4, San Junipero. By the way, when doing some research on this episode, I found out that Mackenzie Davis, the lead actress who plays Yorkie, was born in the year 1987, the same year the simulated world of San Junipero takes place. I just thought that was a pretty rad fact. So get pumped, guys. Sorry, let me find a more 80s sounding word. Get bodacious, guys, because Black Mirror Season 5 is approaching soon. So in order to maintain a 5 star rating, hit subscribe to see a lot more Black Mirror analysis videos just like this one. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys in my next Black Mirror Explained video.